All right. So thank you for joining us today. Um, I am Chuang Vu from admissions office, and I'm delighted to welcome each and every one of you to join this highly anticipated scholarship sharing session organized by HKU. And today's uh, webinar isn't just about, you know, an informational webinar, but it's also an, an, uh, an investment in your future, right? So um, we're extremely privileged to have some distinguished uh, guest speakers who are um, exceptional students who have not only secured scholarships, but also uh, leveraged them to uh, to attain commendable uh, milestones in their studies. And they're here to share with us the experience, um, offering insights and provide guidance to help you succeed on your scholarship application. So uh, Pierre and Yen, why don't you introduce a little bit about yourself? Hi everyone, uh, I'm Pierre, but you can call me Jonathan. I'm a third year student in the BSc program, which is Bachelor of Arts and Sciences at HKU, and I come from Mauritius. Nice to have you all here with us. Yen, over. Uh, yep, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Sin Yen, but you can call me Yen. I'm a second year student majoring in quantitative finance. And I'm from Malaysia, and I'm also a Ellen Road Scholar. All right. Thank you so much, uh, both of you. I think a lot of students here today really want to know, you know, your journey in general and the, you know, the know-how, the secret sauce of your scholarship applications, right? Um, so um, just a little bit more about yourself. Um, I think that, you know, when I talk to students, a lot of them are curious about Hong Kong in general, the life here. Um, I think it'd be great to, you know, bring that to the table, different points of view and experiences from um, their seniors, right? So um, uh, you can have a general idea of what you will be able to experience here in Hong Kong. Um, so over to you, Yen. Hi, uh, yeah. Uh, I definitely want to turn on my video, but I think um, it's not working. Um, it says the host has uh, stopped me from turning on my video. Um, but anyways, um, yeah, definitely. I think Hong Kong is um, a very vibrant city. And the best thing about Hong Kong is that everything is so super close together and the public transport literally brings you to everywhere in Hong Kong. So I think one of the best part about living in and living in halls, especially I live in a residential college called Shenhing College, and we have these things called the high table dinner, and I think it's a very traditional part of HKU where all students who are hall residents come together and we eat a dinner together and we all dress up formally and I think sometimes it reminds me of Harry Potter so I think that's really cool and other than that Hong Kong has a lot of good food you can find all kinds of food here no matter if it's local or you can find lots of um, really good international food cuisines as well especially Indian Chinese cuisines and others. Um, Hong Kong also has a lot of nature that you can explore. So hiking is definitely um, what a lot of people do. So there are lots of mountains that you can hike up to. Um, and I'm personally also a part of the dragon boat team in my hall. So I dragon boat sometimes. Yeah, that's about it. Yeah, I think that it's definitely very exciting, you know, high table dinner, hiking, uh, dragon bolt and uh, a lot of good food, you know, um, hiking and also the ocean here. You have everything you need, right? Um, so uh, we would also like to hear more from here. If you, when you want to play the video, video let me know. Okay. Um, so... What I like about Hong Kong is just like how it's international, but in in a very subtle way. Yeah. Um, 
like for example hku is very international if uh especially if you go into like societies such as my societies which is astrias and uh, it um i think we have a lot of opportunity here for example even um like you can see on the left this is was one of my works which is a choreo that i make yeah. and uh the video on the right is from a high table dinner was my last high table dinner of last year and um it's just it gives the opportunity uh for students to perform um anything like singing dancing and stuff so yeah and the last high table dinner was kind of a special dinner oh which was kind of a party so yeah you can play a little bit of it uh i might get shy yeah Okay, that's it. Um, yeah, and I think um, students, uh, prospective students would also love to know more about your, you know, um, academic journey. Uh, so uh, could you briefly describe your academic journey? Um, I would go for Yen first. Sure. Uh, yeah, so I'm from Malaysia. Um, starting from secondary school, I actually went to an international school in Malaysia. So I studied the GCSE curriculum and then afterwards I moved to studying A-levels. So I did the subjects uh, physics, chemistry, mathematics, as well as for the mathematics during A-levels. Um, and um, at that time, I was looking at possible um, choices for university and I came across University of Hong Kong I actually attended a similar talk that was organized by University of Hong Kong and that got me really interested so um, I applied for to study to study in University of Hong Kong as well as the scholarship to study here all right how about here um, so in Mauritius we uh, have the A-levels as the main examination um, I studied science, which is opposite from my interest, which is music. And this was kind of a like a challenge for me to make peace with studying science. Um, but actually, my um, the counselor, um, the counselor told me that there was a symposium, a STEM symposium organized by HKU Academy for the Talented. And uh, so that was my first touch with HKU. And yes, so I came in 2019 for the STEM symposium. And yeah, it really encouraged me in my studies. I, f I think I placed second with my group. And uh, yeah, so when I got back to Mauritius and finished my stud, uh, was like in my final year, my counselor told me that oh, there's like this scholarship uh, which is the scholarship for the future for future leaders, which is available. So I was like, I like the country, I like the university, so why not, why not try it? And yeah, it worked out pretty well. Mm -hmm, I see. So coming from a very different, you know, culture, uh, from uh, Hong Kong, um, how do you navigate through the diversity here? How do you, uh, you know, negotiate your identity as well? Um, well, I, I would say Mauritius is quite diverse in terms of ethnicity and culture because, um, we have like everyone who is in Mauritius was like migrants. Like we have people from Europe, from Africa, Asia, and yeah, so I'm used to like the difference in culture, but I wasn't used to being an ethnic minority. <laughs> yeah. So this was quite a uh, cultural shock, cultural shock to be like um, the only black people in like my area. But yeah, I think first because of COVID, it was quite difficult. 
but now as like nobody is scared anymore um, about the virus people like are not scared to interact with each other and it's yeah i think i was able to make friends and find my circle and my place in hong kong yeah yeah i i really appreciate the fact that you you know you mentioned that you uh, made a lot of friends here and uh you know it's also interesting to be uh you know the minor uh um population in, in the area right um so talking about diversity um yen uh do you think that it helped you in um your academic journey somehow like because people coming from different backgrounds and disciplines would definitely you know give you uh multiple points of view for example yeah definitely um i actually we come from malaysia and malaysia is a very diverse um country on its own and we have like three different races which is like malay indian and chinese so we definitely do get all parts of the world in this one country together so i think since young i've always just lived in a very diverse environment and that definitely teaches me how to be more embracing and accepting of other people's perspectives their culture and their beliefs um that also taught me um and gave me the ability to adapt very quickly when coming to a new environment because um since young i grew up actually speaking chinese chinese was my first language and because malaysia is such a diverse country um i actually also understood uh cantonese before coming to hong kong so it definitely gave me um uh, allowed me to adapt more quickly to hong kong and coming here hong kong is just as diverse as my country or any other country in the world there's there's some um, people from all around the world working here studying here in hong kong and that's allowed me to meet more people from other parts of the country, especially um, in Europe, America, um, Africa. And that really was opening up my eyes to a lot of new and um, perspectives and also culture that I thought I already came from a diverse enough country, but I also managed to learn so many new things when I came to Hong Kong. Yeah, I agree with you that it's very enriching to, you know, be exposed to so many different cultures in just a small place. Um, and um, yeah, now I think um, a lot of students would love to know more about that. There's nothing better than to know um, the insights from the people who actually won the scholarships, right? Um, so, you know, uh, moving on to scholarships, could you provide insights regarding, you know, financial concerns and scholarship? in general uh, peer? Yes, so, I mean, I come from Mauritius, so the exchange rate from Mauritian rupees to <laughs> Hong Kong dollars is quite big. Um, and I would say the scholarship really helps me to survive here and like continue my studies. And it's especially uh, like I'm very grateful for it because it helps me alleviate the burden, the financial burden that it may have been on my parents. And um, um, yes, it also helps me to become more independent from my parents because I have my own money and I, I have to spend it well and keep a certain amount so that yeah like just be responsible with it and um yes i think if mm. that's answers your question yeah i think it's good to know uh it's good for everybody here to know that even though someone can come from a family background that uh, uh, may not be able to afford um uh, uh education um somewhere in the world, right? But um, Hong Kong U provides uh, the scholarship and the financial support enough for you to uh, survive here and you know you can uh, focus on your studies. Um, so how about Ian? I, I would like to know uh, what kind of advice uh, do you have for the students who, um, who are applying for scholarships at Hong Kong U in general? Okay. Um... I think in general, you need to try to convince um, whoever is reading your essay 
on why you're deserving of the scholarship and what makes you um, deserve the scholarship more than anyone else. So I think my biggest advice would just be to be sincere, I think, to be genuine, that you actually want the scholarship, and also to keep your stories personal, honest and personal, but keep it relevant. So I think from your point of view, how did you grow and what kind of skills you possess that you could better benefit the rest of HKU community and allow you to grow further in this new environment would be a really good starting point on where to start your essay. Yeah, um, I, I appreciate the fact that you share, you know, personal story uh, would make you stand out because it's unique. It's not like someone else um, that you know, right? And also being genuine. I think I think nowadays a lot of people would be, you know, very afraid when they apply for a scholarship and see, you know, people uh, are, uh, there are people who can be better than me. So how do I make my profile outstanding? And chances are, um, uh, you know, you will flex or you will show off a lot of things that you, uh, you've done. But I think, you know, be showing the honesty, um, and uh, your being genuine would definitely win the hearts of uh, the admissions team, um, at Hong Kong U. Um, so, um, you know, um, we talked about your academic life and, uh, yeah, uh, scholarships, uh, insights. Um, how about you know students' life in Hong Kong? Because I think it's also a concern for you know students uh, elsewhere when they when it comes to uh, studying in Hong Kong, um, will they have a lot of support from the university so their student life can be you know um, well well rounded and um, and so uh, shifting gears to student life, could you share uh, your experience a little bit? Um, I would direct this question to Peer. Oh, well, I think the student life in Hong Kong is really good. Like, I didn't ha don't have any, I mean, I don't have much uh, concerns about it. Um, the most, like, interesting thing is, for me and outstanding thing is, like, the safety of Hong Kong. Like, I could study at like 2 a.m. or 3 a.m. and still go back home safely without nothing happening. Um, there's a good support in terms of like mental health or even physical health because we have like free gyms and stuff. Uh, for mental health, we have um, CEDOS, which provides a lot of support for students and activities for, for them. We have like the counseling uh, services, also the university health service. So I think um, Hong Kong HKU especially provides a lot of services to ensure that um, every student is having a great time at the university. Yeah. And did you, you know, participate in any um, club or organization uh, within the, the, the university? Yes. So I am a student ambassador, um, so which allowed me to like, be like a, how do you say it? A model for HKU. <laughs> I don't know if some of you saw my pictures online. Um, uh, yeah. And being a student ambassador, uh, means that you have to represent HKU. So I was, I had the opportunity to participate in like the 111th anniversary dinner with like helping um, uh, the university with that. And like, it allows you to um, interact with students from other faculties and from other countries also. Um, for clubs or societies, uh, I am in one society, which is uh, Astreas, an expressive art society, and I'm in the dance department, uh, head of dance department. So, yeah, I think that's, uh, this society helped me to, like, make most of my friends and, like, grow as a person most, because I, I was just, like, a small individual to becoming the head and leading a whole team. It's there's a lot of like personal work to do and yeah that was a great experience and you also perform at school right so how does that uh, you know uh, connect with your major your interests and you know 
um, in general. Well, I mean, I always dream to be a performer, to be honest. And it's, it's just really, I don't know, satisfying to see my dreams come true um, for like participating um, in such uh, events. And yeah, I, I, I don't think about it that much, but when I think about it, I'm very grateful to have come here. Mm. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. How about uh, Yen? You know, um, uh, clean out life in in Hong Kong, student life especially. Then, what would you have to uh, to you know share with uh, the audience? Sure. Uh, I think um I've already shared just now. Like my favorite part of Hong mm. Kong is how accessible the trains and the public transports are because it literally it literally brings you to like everywhere in Hong Kong and it's efficient it's quick and as a student you get like half price discount off so it's cheap um I really have to wait more than five minutes for any of my public transportations so I think that's a big plus about Hong Kong that I love and that the train runs really late at night so even though I'm coming back home at like 1 a.m trains still bring you home sometimes and during public holidays it's like open throughout the night so that's really good about living in uh, Hong Kong because that means you don't really need to get a car you don't need to think about uh, you don't need to spend about on taxis and you don't need to think about how you should get yourself from one place to the other and I think HKU provides some um, really good support for their students as well, especially for international students. I think I'm most grateful about the accommodation that HKU provides us because we all know that in Hong Kong, Hong Kong property prices are really expensive and that I'm really grateful that HKU provides them at a highly subsidized rate. So that's also a big part of um, financial alleviation in terms of living costs in Hong Kong. Um, other than that, I would say that in general, the students in Hong Kong, you study really hard, but we also party really hard. Um, there's loads of clubs in Hong Kong, so we make sure to play hard while we study hard as well. Mm -hmm. Are you a member of any clubs or organizations in Hong Kong? In Hong Kong, you? Yeah, um, I've joined mostly just clubs in mm -hmm. my school, uh, and hall as well. So as mentioned just now, I'm, I actually joined the Dragon Boat Club, Dragon Boat. and. Yeah, so we get on the dragon boat and they train like once every two weeks. And that's really fun to just be part of this like Hong Kong tradition. And we also know that we will be participating in some races soon. So I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, uh, it's very insightful to hear what you have to say. And I think it will be very helpful for the audience here, whether it be parents or students who are watching this uh, webinar and um, you know later you will get the chance to share more with uh, the audience about uh, you know uh, Hong Kong U in general and scholarship um, but uh, before doing that I'm going to uh, talk a little bit more about the scholarships that we currently have after that we will have a Q&A questions where we uh, Q&A where we uh, will you know address all of your questions uh, that you have been uh, posing uh, from the beginning of the webinar so stay tuned and uh, don't worry about that we will try to address all of your questions all right so how do we review students um, uh, I think this key message is very important for all of you because we are reviewing um, students' profile holistically uh, with not only academic achievements, meaning your GPA, um, your uh, high score at school, but also non-academic performances. Uh, for example, your extracurricular activities, you know, clubs that you have joined, um, and um, um, organizations, uh, internship that you've done, some extra work that you uh, you did. Uh, and uh, extra courses you took um, and also, you know, leadership projects that you initiate. Basically, we will, you know, review all of that um, and uh, you will also um, uh, be able to showcase uh, what your interest is, who you are and your future plan. The um, 
community that you care for in your personal statement and other supplemental documents. Um, and after that, you uh, may be invited for an interview, uh, you know, where you can share more about who you are and we will, you know, somehow assess you um, as well as to know more about you. So uh, we have different scholarships and these are just some highlights of the main scholarships that we offer. Um, I will go from the left to the right. So from the left, it's entrance scholarships. It's a merit-based scholarships as long as you have, you know, high GPA um, and uh, you will be automatically considered for an entrance scholarships without submitting any uh, you know additional documents you just submit your um, uh, required documents um, like your GBA then you already be considered for a scholarship um, and uh, apart from that we also have you know other scholarships like uh, belt and broad scholarships uh, future leader scholarship and he for she impact champions um, so uh, belt and road and future leaders will, you know, require you to provide some additional documents. Um, and he for she impact champions will require you to write an essay. Um, and more details about these kind of scholarships will be provided on our website where you when you know you read. Uh, be able to read about the criteria requirements and also necessary documents. Um, and um, as uh, our uh, speaker shared earlier, preparing everything in advance would be advantageous for all of you. Um, just uh, some important notes for the scholarships other than the entrance scholarship. Belt and Roll Scholarships uh, requires you to write a one-page uh um, uh, write up on why you should be considered for the scholarship and your plans after graduation. So you can see, you know, knowing about yourself, it's a lot of reflection, right? Because you would need to, to showcase what your plans are after graduation in order to be um, considered uh, uh, for this scholarship and you also have to write up your cv uh, i know a lot of you here have already had your cv but if you haven't there are many different workshops out there that can you know train you how to write a good cv so you can add it to your applications um, and apart from that uh, we will also require you to provide some uh, supporting documents like certificates showing that oh you have um, attended this and that um, activities you have built uh, the whole uh, foundation for you know uh, women's finance for example um, you know all of that will be um, considered so make sure that you have all of um, the certificates in hand uh, to submit uh, for um, both baron roads and future leaders we will need you to, to prepare a short paragraph per area it um you know below it can be uh, academic achievement contribution to institution or society so not only um to excel yourself but also uh you need to show that there's a community that you care for right and you want to uh, contribute to the society you live in and you need to showcase your leadership skills as well a lot of times i see students do uh, initiate different uh, projects to help their communities or uh, you know their schools for example um, and that would be um, uh, highly appreciated because we will see and consider that as well um, and um we would love to see your interest in integrating into and contributing to Hong Kong society as well. Um, and for Malaysian applications, uh, um, uh, it is important to show that you want to contribute to Malaysian society and Malaysia, Hong Kong, people to people relations. That's for our belt and roll scholarships and future leader scholarships. So how about he for she impact champions? We require you to, you know, submit an essay with no more than one, uh, that 500 words that is, you know, related to uh, the topic, related to what we require you to do. And um, obviously uh, all of uh, these pieces of information can be found online. So uh, please rest assured that uh, information will be available for you. And uh, your job is just to read it very carefully and decide which 
uh, scholarships are most important, uh, most um, suitable for you. Um, and we do have uh, scholarships for international qualifications, non-local students, right? Um, so uh, when you navigate the website admissions.hku.hk, you will be able to see, you know, uh, fee and scholarship sections over here. When you click on that, it will show a scholarship uh, page. Uh, it's all about scholarship, you know, and you can... Uh, you know, there are different uh, filters, like whether you are an international student or you are a local student, for example, um, it will filter the number of scholarships you are eligible for. And based on that, you can apply for those scholarships. Apart from the entrance scholarships, there are um, a lot more scholarships that you may be eligible for. So uh, you just need to read carefully all of those scholarships and decide what will be best for your application. And you uh, can also apply for more than one um, scholarship. So uh, there are a lot of opportunities out there. Yeah, this is um, a screenshot of an application. So you will see here, uh, this is the first choice program and other ch uh, program choices. In general, you will have three program choices um, in total. And you will also, so when you apply, you are already automatically considered for entrance scholarship, right? You, at the end of um, the application, you will also have the option to apply for special scholarships. And you just need to click um, uh, the uh, scholarship uh, on the screen, for example, then, uh, you know, read all the terms and conditions and decide which one you will want to apply. Okay. Yeah. As I mentioned earlier, you will have the opportunity to apply for up to three program choices. And I think this is very general. At least it has, you know, the flexibility ability for you to um, uh, if you have a lot of interest in different uh, majors right um, and uh, I think later um, Pierre and Yen can also share how flexible uh, their curriculum uh, were so uh, you can have a general idea of how a person who doesn't know what he or she wants to do can still navigate through um uh, university life and choose what they really want to do. Okay. And our uh, admissions is rolling admissions until 22nd August 2024. It's already begin and we encourage you to apply as soon as possible. Uh, but um, we do uh, we do accept um, applications until 22nd of August 2024. So if you do not have every single you know piece of uh, documents at hand now you don't have to worry because you still have ample time to uh, submit further uh, documents um, throughout the time um, and we encourage you to check the expected lower boundaries and uh, they're available on HKU website and later we will show you that website. Um, you know, you'll be able to see English language proficiency, second language proficiency and program requirements. Some programs will require your maths and physics um, and chemistry uh, to a level that's acceptable to uh, be able to enter the program. So you will see the program specific requirements on our website when you uh, uh, start to filter different um, uh, information. And um, in general, we uh, require you in terms of academic consideration, we require you to provide high school transcripts in case you do not have a sufficient uh, or don't do not have enough high school transcripts, say you are in grade 12, for example, you can still uh, submit what you currently have and the predicted results. Um, so 
and for non academic consideration, obviously it'd be extracurricular curricular activities, your personal statement and your references can be from, you know, your mentors, um, the company that you intern for, and also from your um, teachers. Uh, so um, you do not have to submit everything at once, but you can start apply today and update your application as new results become available. So it's very flexible for you. Um, you can apply today and update later, right? Um, and so, yeah, as I mentioned, you can go to admissions.hku.hk to find more information about your program choices, your fees and scholarships, events that we are going to have um, in the near future, and also, uh, you know, read uh, more about uh, students' testimonials. Uh, and most importantly, you can apply uh, right away uh, today, all right? Um, and for more information, you can also uh, scan all of these QR code to HKU scholarship office where you will see, you know, different offices, uh, different scholarships that are available to you and, uh, you know, see if uh, you are eligible for those scholarships. Um, you can also follow up uh, uh, on, a, on Instagram to see, you know, deadlines that we have and activities uh, that you care about. And we also have a Discord channel. I know maybe some of you haven't been uh, familiar with Discord, but uh, probably some of you have. Uh, this channel will provide a lot of support on your application. And um, there will be people who will answer your questions uh, about scholarships, about programs, about you know different tracks that you uh, will be taking at HKU in the future if you are admitted. Um, so stay tuned and uh, scan the QR code and find more about us. So one last request. Each of you will pro will give um, one key advice that you would like to give the, the audience uh, today uh, for a scholarship uh, application. Um. Okay, should I start? Let me check my notes. I wrote something. Wait, I think the most important thing is literally just to be yourself. And like you, you had a life for like the past 16 years, I guess, because mm -hmm. they're high school students. Um, yeah, so you have a story to tell and it's important to tell your story. And even if you don't know where life will bring you just see what you can do right now and do it the best you can mm. yeah thank you yeah i think yep i think my advice would be just go for it because you know a lot of the times we're scared that oh i'm definitely not gonna get it i don't have as good of a grade as other people or i didn't win in the things i participate or um, I didn't do as many, take on as many leadership roles as other people did. But I think my most important advice to give is just to go for it because you lose nothing to apply for the scholarship. So just be confident in yourself, be genuine, be sincere. I'm sure that if you're genuine and confident in yourself, you'll definitely be able to transmit that energy towards the people who are reading your essay and um, manifest that good things will happen to you. Yeah, thank you. I think both of you are being yes. very philosophical uh, right now. But uh, yeah, uh, the key message that I you know can consolidate would be you know be yourself and just do it right. Just go for it. You have nothing to lose. Thank you, thank you so much, uh, Pierre and Yen, and uh, um our audience. Please be uh, reminded that our HKU uh, Information Day is on the twenty eighth of, of of October. Um, this month, and uh, you all are welcome uh, to HKU 
main campus, you know, to see us, to understand more about the university and to find more um, information that's necessary for your application. So once again, thank you for staying until this time. And I hope that uh, you know, I uh, wish you all the best uh, to your scholarship application to educate you. Thank you.